Hello everyone. Thank you for joining our Griffith College webinar today. Uh, I am Gauri Lakya. I'm the admissions manager here at the college and I have uh, two lovely students here with me. They're going to help me with some question and answers later on that you may have today. And we've got Ben Tinsley. He's a marketing manager. So we've got a full team here to help you with any questions you have um, through the entire webinar. Uh, you can post your um, uh, questions on that little box in that little box there and we will uh, respond to you as, as soon as possible. So feel free to ask as many questions as you like and there's no wrong question. So let's go with it, okay? So in the beginning, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about Griffith College. Griffith College is one of the largest, largest and biggest leading providers of uh, in Queensland today and we articulate uh, with uh, Griffith University programs so we work in association with Griffith. Uh, Griffith College started in 1997 at Mount Gravatt campus and we opened a new campus here on Gold Coast uh, in 2012. So we have a good mix of students. We've got both international and domestic students around 60% international and 40% domestic students. So the advantage, a lot of you will have that question, why Griffith College and why not university? And so the difference, there's a lot of difference between studying first year at the university and first year at the college. At the college, we have, we, we actually articulate into more than 200 different um, degree pathways at the university. Our programs are specially catered for students um, to provide extra support, learning support during the first year of the at, in the diploma program. So that really helps you to create a good foundation and good grounding that will help you towards the second year of your degree. It's a seamless pathway when you get your offer. Most of you would have had their offer letters from us now. So it's a seamless pathway. The offer is to study first year of the diploma with us and then you go into the second year of the bachelor at university. This is, uh, there's a little map there on the slide. As you can see, there's, um, students can come and study the diploma, which is equal to the first year of the bachelor. You get full credit, you study eight courses of the bachelor, you get full credit for the eight courses, and then you go into the second year of the degree program. Now we have a lot of different diploma pathways that we offer. There are about 13 different, different diplomas that we offer. These diplomas are articulated into uh, related bachelor degrees at the university. So first off, we have healthcare, which articulates into nursing. We have health sciences, which articulates into different programs um, like pharmacology, toxicology, biomedical science, health science, pharmacy. Uh, we have hotel management, uh, which articulates into hotel management, hotel and tourism management, also into business and commerce. And then we have social and psychological science, arts and communication, information technology. So all these programs um, will definitely get you into the second year of the degree in the related field. So I would suggest that you go on to the Griffith College website and have a look at the diploma pathways that we offer. And underneath the diploma pathways, there's a whole long list of different degrees that you can study at university. And it also articulates, it's outlined out there how many credits you'll get and what kind of GPA you require. So there are more programs like sciences, commerce, criminology, criminal justice, engineering, and design. So Brisbane, uh, well, uh, like I said, we have two campuses, once in, one in Mount Rabat and one in Brisbane. Uh, in, in, at Mount Rabat, which is in Brisbane, and we have one in Gold Coast, which is in Southport. Now, Brisbane is an idle student city. It's, uh, as you can see, it's uh, built on the river, and um, it, it offers, it's, it's actually uh, the third largest city in Australia. So um, after Sydney and Melbourne, Brisbane is the third largest city. It's like any other big city uh, like Sydney and Melbourne, but the living costs are much lower than the other Eastern capital cities. 
um, obviously we have multicultural um, uh, students from all over, residents here as well from all over the world. And like any other big city, we do have headquarters uh, for Flight Center, BMD Holdings, EMM Power, Virgin Blue, Suncorp. So there are a lot of big corporate companies that have their um, headquarters here in Brisbane. And so obviously finding jobs is also easier. Now there's a little bit to a uh, little bit to tell you about Brisbane City, and obviously, as students, you would wonder: yes, apart from uh, studying and finding jobs, what else does Brisbane have to offer? So there are some top things that we have recommended that you can do, and I've got my students here who are going to talk a little bit about what you can do, where you can go in Brisbane City. So let's. Um, I'll put it out there for you. Sophie, you start off and Cynthia, you can help answer the questions as well. Um, well, one thing I like to do, I like visiting like museums and art galleries. That's something that Brisbane has a lot of that the Gold Coast doesn't really have. Yeah. Um, so it's very cultural, which I like about Brisbane. Yeah. Yeah. It's easy to get around. You can walk down South Bank and there's heaps of really nice restaurants to go to. You can go to the Botanic Gardens as well or go and see a shop at QPAC. There's always something to do yeah and of course there's the lawn pine sanctuary where you can cuddle the koalas <laughs> and the kangaroos and of course as um, international students i'm sure these animals are unique to australia so you would definitely want to have a cuddle yeah the there's a lot of nightlife as well um and um uh, Cynthia, you tell me what do you do when you go there and have you been to Brisbane City at night time? Um, um, yep, yeah, there's Eat Street which is on the um, North Shore I think near the cruise terminal and there's like so many different vendors where you can get food from, it's huge. And then there's also the South Bank Noodle Markets which are really cool at night time with live music as well. Yeah, hmm. um, there's also like, like some of the live music is really different so like there's little jazz bars and like the um, nightlife is a little bit different to the Gold Coast. It's not just clubs, there's lots of mm. bars and mm. like cool, relaxing places to go. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. All right, and then the other campus we have is in Southport, which is in Gold Coast. Now, Gold Coast is anyone's it's it's a it's a paradise it's absolutely it's got um kilometers of long sandy beaches obviously there it's known as the it's a premier destination in australia um it's the fastest growing city today in australia and griffith university's uh, gold coast campus is also the fastest growing campus today and of course um gold coast hosted the commonwealth games uh, last year in april and Griffith University was the official partner. So that has brought Griffith University and Gold Coast on the world map. So it is, a, and of course, it's being a premier tourist destination. There are a lot of cafes and attractions for the tourists. So there's part-time jobs are also easily available yeah. on Gold Coast. Things to do in Gold Coast. Sophia? Um, well, I personally like going to some of like the, the beaches or the mm. um, the sort of smaller sanctuaries. So um, like rock pools and glowworm caves and things like that, which you can't really find, I don't think, anywhere else. They're very hidden, but they're very special to the Gold Coast. Mm. Um, and another thing is probably the shopping. There's yeah. lots of good shopping here yeah, as well. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> and what do you do on the weekends? Do you go to the beach? Yeah, I go to the beach, I head down to Burley and then you can sit on the hill and like watch all the surfers. Yeah. There's so many cafes that you can go to and get some really good food and just relax and enjoy mm. the coastal lifestyle. And, and getting around to these places is also easy from the campus because mm -hmm. we've got the tram yes. which stops yeah. right at the campus yeah. and then it takes you through to all these spots. Yes. The yes. hidden jewels. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so it's really easy to get around as well. Um, daily expenses. So roughly, if you, if you go out to have a coffee or something, then you're paying around $4. But if you go for a movie and a light meal, like, um, you know, having a cold drink and 
a burger or something, how mm. much would you pay approximately? Movie ticket would be how much? About 10, 10 to 15 dollars. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, depending mm -hmm. where you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then dinner will cost you like between like 10 and 15 as yeah. well. So it's yeah. reasonable for a student. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's good. So there's a lot of uh, information on our website as well in, in terms of living expenses in Australia. How much would it cost you to rent a place or for electricity or internet and things like that. So I would suggest that once the webinar is over, you should go onto the website and have a look at all the additional information that we have there for you. So what next? The next steps for you to accept your offer. Um, I'm assuming most of you have got your offer letters. We've sent out invitations to all of you who've got the offer letters already. The next step for you is how to accept your offer and meet all the conditions on the acceptance uh, on the offer letter and attend orientation and come and enroll with us. So what do you need to do? Your offer letter that you would have got, so most of you would have received your offer letters on the offer letter email template, there's a list of things that you need to do. So what you need to do is read your offer letter carefully. You need to sign the acceptance documents. If there are any conditions that are pending on the offer letter, it's listed under the conditions in your offer letter. So you need to provide those outstanding documents. And of course, if students who are coming through agents can just contact your agents and they will help you uh, to, with all the pending documents and to complete all the admissions formalities that you need to do. So read all the conditions like I said, provide all the documents that are listed on your conditions that are pending. Then you sign the acceptance of offer. As you can see, there are two pages. One is for the Griffith College acceptance offer and the other one's at the Griffith University acceptance offer. You should also read the acceptance declaration and you should also read the uh, policy, the refund policies and that is listed at the end of the offer letter. The next is to pay your tuition fees. Now there are different payment options that Payment options is also listed on your offer letter. You can either pay through internet transfer, you can do a BPA, so transfer money into the bank account. Uh, you can do it through Western Union Global Pay, and uh, you can send us a check or a bank draft. So there are different pay ways to make the payment. Now, most of you, so you send us all these documents, proof of payment, uh, to the admissions team. Now this work will be done by your agents if you're coming to an agent. For most of the students, the other important st step that you need to do is before you accept your offer and pay, make the payment, there is another step. So you need to actually contact your agent. Our, our team in um, the our offshore team will get in touch with you from, the, from Griffith College. They will do an interview so every student needs to do an interview. You have to pass the interview. And then we will also, um, they will do a quick financial check of your documents that you've submitted. Once they approve, you pass the interview, financials are clear. They will email us the copy of your acceptance and you make the payment. And then you will get a COE, confirmation of enrollment from the Griffith College. That confirmation of enrollment is what you need along with your offer letter to put in for your student visa. So these are the steps that you need to follow. Once all that is done, you will then, the next step for you is to prepare to come here while you're waiting for your student visa to arrive, or you probably have already got your student visa. Next step is accommodation. So accommodation information is also available on the website. There's um, um, on-campus accommodation, off-campus accommodation, a lot of students stay in shared accommodation. Um, do any of you know or stay with shared accommodation? You can give some information. How do students normally, they come on campus and they find friends, how do they find shared accommodation? I think so, yeah. I think a lot of people um, make friends and a lot of them obviously do need somewhere to live, mm -hmm. so they 
yeah, they find it that way. That's probably the easiest way when you get to know people that need somewhere to live and you can find it like that. There's yeah. always ads on campus yeah. advertising like rooms available in a share house. Mm -hmm. which is probably the easiest yeah. way, yeah. most yeah. direct. Yeah. So usually students come here, international students, they come here and then what they do is uh, initially they um, book a sort of temporary accommodation near the campus and at, at orientation they meet all the other students and then they find friends and they find sh shared yeah. accommodation and it works out to be cheaper for students to yeah. just live in shared accommodation. So the uh, on-campus accommodation is both available at uh, Mount Gravatt campus and at our Gold Cooks campus. Uh, it could be, there's different prices for catered and non-catered accommodation. It depends on uh, what are your needs basically. So that information is also available on the website. Uh, for on-campus accommodation, you have to go directly onto the website through, through the Griffith University link and submit your application. Griffith College students can live on on campus accommodation in Griffith on campus accommodation. Off campus accommodation is a shared house like we said. Um, it could be anything between 160 to 450 a week depending on your needs of uh, internet and mm -hmm. aircon or you know all, all that is always additional. But it's good shared accommodation because you build friendships for a lifetime. Yep. Mm. Uh, we also have homestay and our homestay is another good way to live in Australia and experience the Australian lifestyle and you, you can live uh, with family, Australian families uh, who have similar kind of uh, uh, interests that you have. And then that way you kind of learn the culture you they, they become like your own family mm -hmm. away from home so that's another option for you depending on whether you want breakfast lunch and dinner or just lunch and dinner or breakfast and dinner the prices vary accordingly again for homestay you need to go directly onto the website and book your homestay accommodation all right important dates Orientation, trimester one orientation starts in its beginning 18th of February. There are different orientation day, dates for different programs, uh, but that week is the most important week for all students. You must try and get your for, uh, orientation. Orientation is when you meet new friends. Yeah. So when you come here, you're like, when you started, what was your experience? When you start, uh, university in the first year, you feel a little bit lost, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when when you attend orientation is when, for example, Cynthia and Sophia yeah. <laughs> became friends on first day of yeah. orientation. First day, yeah. It's As, definitely daunting, yeah. but pushing yourself to go, even if you're a little bit scared, pays off. And yeah. I, I think would say. also, um, like, I think Cynthia just took the leap and said hi to me and we started talking and that's how we became friends and we've been friends for years now after that so you just have to kind of push yourself mm -hmm. and you never know like who you'll meet and mm -hmm. how many friends you can make yeah yeah everyone's in the same position mm -hmm. so there's no need to be yeah worried. exactly yeah. exactly because everyone is new everyone is nervous so you make friends easily yeah. because yeah. you would just turn around to the next person and say hey what's the next next thing we have to do do are you doing the campus tour can i do it with you yeah or are you attending this session yeah. this is how it works and this mm -hmm. is how you make friends so apart from just um uh, coming to orientation and getting registering in the program and getting your timetable and student id and mm -hmm. all that there are a lot of fun activities yeah you get to see the campus you make new friends lifetime friends yeah <laughs> so it's very important to come for orientation the other important day is, and of course, the commencement date is 25th of February. You should be here by 25th of February. Census date, what we call is um, the last date before you can make any changes to your enrollment without any financial pen penalty is what we call census date. That's the week four of trimester one, that is the 22nd of March. And then of course you have the mid trimester break from 19 to 26 April and then trimester finishes in 7 June and you start your second trimester. 
If you have any questions, please ask us now. And there's, you can also follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. You can post your questions on those Instagram and uh, Twitter and Facebook as well. And we will always be there to answer your questions. So, do we have any questions that have come through, Ben? Yeah, so the first one is, how many days do I need to go to class? Sophia, Cynthia, you've been attending classes. Roughly how many days do you go? So, two to three, depending yeah. how you plan your timetable yeah. and where your classes fall. Yeah. But usually you can plan it. So, you're here two to three days a week. Yes, um, I'm the same as well. I think in the beginning, you might find yourself having to come a few extra days because um, the way the timetable works out. Once you get used to planning it though and how to organize it, you can usually come two to three days full time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how many hours would you be coming for those days? Is it like the whole day or is it just parts of the days? Or um, Not all the days mm -hmm. are full. Yeah. Maybe one and, one and a half of the days are pretty jam packed, but yeah. the rest of it like another day. Mm -hmm. Just a half day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you're enrolled in four courses, you're looking at around four contact hours per course per week. Mm -hmm. So uh, I guess it works out to be around that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Someone has asked, when will I get my student ID card? So student ID card uh, you will get on orientation day. Uh, so you must come for orientation. You have to come and register in your classes. Uh, our enrollment does open on the 31st, so if you've already paid your fees and accept your offer, then you can go in and enroll and register and get your timetable. But when you come for orientation is when you will be able to upload your photo and follow all the instructions, and then you can apply for your ID and collect your ID then. Perfect. Uh, someone's asked, how do you get to class? Yeah, so Maybe how do you, how, you how, would you, how would you travel to class? Um, so I live in Helensvale, which is probably 15 minutes from the campus on the Gold Coast. Um, I park at one of the public car parks and then get on the tram, which takes about 10 minutes. And the tram drops you directly to campus. Wow, that's good. Yeah, I catch the tram as well. I live in Broad Beach, which is on the other end of the tram from Helensvale. Um, but... I just walk to the tram from my house and get on the tram and it's like half an hour to the campus. Wow, yeah, yeah. so it's really easy to yeah. travel to campus. Yeah. Uh, even uh, at Mount Gravatt, uh, there's a bus stop right on campus. Uh, traveling to city will take you anything about 15-20 minutes. Uh, there's also an inter-campus bus between Nathan and Mount Gravatt campus every 15 minutes. So you can just hop on and hop off anytime mm -hmm. you want and go and experience the other campuses as well. There's also a discounted student bus from um, Nathan campus to Gold Coast campus. So I, I guess you have to uh, just book that if you mm -hmm. want to come. So it's a discounted price for students. Uh, someone has asked, are there any scholarships? Well, at the moment, um, there is, we definitely do have academic scholarships. So if you perform well in your first trimester and you, amongst all the other students, there is every chance that you'll get an ac academic scholarship. So that is something to look forward to and do really well in your first trimester. Yeah. So academic scholarships are well available. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's all the questions that have come in so far. Okay. Yeah. Any any other questions? Do you? Oh, and la say? last one would be, um, girls. Do you have any tips for new students, or anything you think are really important, or little things you'd like to share for someone about to come and start their study? Um, I think like before you come even to orientation, like plan ahead, know where you can get public transport from, know if you aren't getting public transport, how you can get here because you don't want to feel stressed on the first time you have to come here. Even like come a few days before and just have a look and see where you can go and see how mm -hmm. you can get here mm -hmm. because you'll feel much more at ease coming here for the important days. Yeah. Yeah, that's an excellent tip, definitely. Yeah, yeah be prepared before. Yeah. Because it's all new, it's daunting. Yeah. I mean, even for you, it was so daunting. So it is <laughs> yeah. It is always easier, yeah. It's a big campus, but 
once you like know your bearings, you'll really start to feel at home. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And there's campus uh, maps available on the apps and things yeah. like that as well. So mm -hmm. you can yeah. always, yeah. Mm. 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 All right. So I think we are done with the questions today. And um, thank you once again. Thank you for attending our webinar. Um, thank you, Cynthia. Thank you, Sophie. Thank you, Ben. And we hope to see you here and look forward to welcoming you at Griffith College very soon. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye.